FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Trilogy Metals is a world-class developer in Alaska's Ambler Mining District. The company already possesses 8 billion pounds of copper, 3 billion pounds of zinc, over 1 million gold equivalent ounces, and now over 77 million pounds of cobalt. Trilogy's Arctic project boasts an after-tax net present value of $1.4 billion with a 33% IRR. Trilogy is led by an experienced management team with proven success in discovering and developing projects in Alaska. The company is well capitalized, has no debt, and possesses strong institutional support. Trilogy trades on the New York and Toronto exchanges under the ticker symbol TMQ. To learn more, go to TrilogyMetals.com. That's TrilogyMetals.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. We're in Vancouver for the Sprott Resource Stock Conference, Investment Conference. It's always a lot of fun. We meet up with interesting people. We caught up with our good friend Doug Casey, and uh, we saw him in Vegas, but we didn't get a chance to sit down with him. So, Doug, hey, what do you make of all this? Well, the question is how we define all this. Uh, We could go from the current markets to the collapse of Western civilization and all points in between. So what do you what do you think, Kerry? What do we really want to talk about? Well, so the collapse of Western civilization, it just reminds me of something my former law partner used to say to me. He used to say, Kerry, the situation is hopeless but never serious. That's absolutely true. I I don't I try not to get annoyed at anything these days because it's just not worth it. You think about cosmic matters, you, you you don't sweat the small stuff like TSA. Yeah, totally. So. Totally. So, but we're in a precarious situation. It, it looks like the markets are trying to tell us something is big, something is about to maybe happen, kind of like 08, 09. Do you see that type of event? I do see that, actually. Uh <sighs> Uh, yeah, I've got to say, a lot of people take credit for it, I know, uh, and accurately, but I, I did call uh, what happened in 08. Uh, I was wrong, mm-hmm. however, in seeing the recovery of uh, since 2010. The analogy I like to use, Carrie, is that in, uh, starting in 2007, we entered the leading edge of a giant financial hurricane. And we went through that leading edge and came out of it into the eye of the storm in 2010. We've been in the eye of the storm since then. It's a gigantic storm. I think as we speak, uh, we're going into the trailing edge of the hurricane, and it's going to be much worse and much longer lasting and much different than the unpleasantness of 2008 and 2009. Well, it's kind of like uh, we hit a Cat 5 hurricane, and now it's intensified. It picked up a lot of uh, water over the the Gulf of Mexico, and now it's about to dump on us. But, hey, recently, so we have all this seismic instability in California. They're overdue for the so-called big one. I mean, we we saw, like, clusters of hurricane swarms, as they called it, and then we had a 6.4, and then we had a 7.1. Do you think the whole conflagration is going to be a lot of earth changes involved along with economic uh, peril? Well, the earth has been here for approximately 4.5 billion years, uh, and it'll be here for approximately that much longer until it's subsumed by an expanding sun uh, as it turns into a red giant. Uh, But no, I'm... uh, Although I'm a, a longtime amateur and geologist, uh, I pay more attention to what's going on in the financial markets. I think that uh, the upset we're going to have there is much more certain in terms of time. So you look at the markets and, you know, if you've gone through Amazon or Home Depot, uh, they're like drowning in products. It's like falling off the shelves. And isn't that kind of what's wrong with the financial world? They keep coming up with these new products, new ways to hedge risk, to spread risk around, derivatives, whatever. They're always looking for new products to separate the unwary from their money. 
and now they've just got too many of them and they're juggling too many balls. How is this thing going to wind up with these big investment banks, these big financial houses? Uh, I think you've actually put your finger on this, Kerry, because uh, this is the problem, uh, among many others, uh, with uh, not just the U.S., but the world today. It's over-financialized. If we lived in a free market, unregulated society, my guess, and this is a guess, is that only about 5% of activity would be in shuffling paper, shuffling money around. But today, uh, the way things are structured with the huge amount of debt in the world uh, and all the power that's been amassed in the banking system and the brokerage firms, it's something on the order of 22-23%. Uh, this, is, this is all non-productive. And, uh, when this thing blows apart, it's going to be in part because of the huge amount of debt in the world that's been fomented by central banks and commercial banks. Uh, I don't doubt that Deutsche Bank, uh, one of the largest banks in the world, the largest bank in uh, Germany, certainly, uh, is going to go bust. And it could be a daisy chain. If uh, there's a run on Deutsche Bank, and my understanding is that there is one. There is one. There is one now. People withdrawing a billion dollars or billion euros a day at this point. It can be a daisy chain. They default on their uh, uh, their obligations to Credit Suisse or Paribas or whoever, and then they can't make it, and it, it, it all de defaults. And what will the governments do? Well, I guess they'll print up more dollars or euros or yen or whatever it might be to bail out these big banks. So uh, this is really quite unsustainable and we're close to the edge. It's going to be ugly. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, if we didn't have 20% uh, of the GDP tied up or 20, more than 20 with financialization and then another 30 or so tied up with government, we're looking at more than half of every dollar that's earned going to f financial institutions or government. And of course, that's unsustainable. And it's got to end at some point. Well, there's a chance that this is going to spill over into society in general. Uh, it's been said many, many times, and it's well known, and it's factual. The rich, in fact, are getting richer. Uh, why is that? Uh, it's because... The rich are close to the government. Uh, there's a resolve, revolving door between outfits like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley and the Treasury Department and other government agencies. Uh, the rich can stand close to the fire hydrant of money being spewed out of the Federal Reserve. They get it first. They get most of it. Uh, the rich can... Uh, hire the accountants and the tax lawyers to take advantage of laws that they get passed. So, of course, there's been a concentration of wealth. And the problem is that these idiots like uh, AOC and the Gang of Four, or who do they call the them, squad. the Squad, yeah. and the whole Democratic Party is on their page at this point. They want to see more regulation and more government power when the answer to the question is less. In fact, I'm an anarcho-capitalist. I don't believe in the state as a, as a matter of principle. So it should all be abolished. The, the problem is, is that if you try to deregulate at this point, if you try to let interest rates go to normalized levels, if you stop shoveling phony money into the economy, the whole system is going to collapse. Yeah. Now, it's going to collapse anyway, but actually, uh, I'm in favor of a controlled demolition. If you have a 100-story skyscraper that's about to fall, what do you do? Do you just... Close. Yeah, that's right. You don't let it fall randomly whenever it yeah. happens. What you do is you bring it down uh, in a controlled way. That's what should be done, but nobody's going to do that because nobody wants to be held responsible for it. And what I'm afraid of is that Donald Trump, since he's kind of a free market guy, uh, if this all collapses on his watch, 
it's going to be an excuse to blame what's left of the free market and capitalism on the disaster that's coming, and then it's going to get worse. So I'm very pessimistic. Yeah, well, it's interesting because the to the uninitiated, 0809 happened because capitalism was out of control, and companies, you know, were doing whatever they wanted. And in fact, it was really the opposite. Uh, that's right. Um, it's you know all of these in the highly regulated, highly taxed, uh, highly subsidized uh, economy that we have today. Government pulls the strings. Uh, I trade commodities, among other things. And the Department of Agriculture, which doesn't grow a bushel of wheat, uh, do you know how many employees it has? Take a guess. I'd say 120,000. In fact, not only did they not grow anything, they pay people not to grow stuff. <laughs> it's, yes, you're absolutely right. And they make it much harder for, yes, but that's a good guess. You're just about right. Uh, and this is true of all of these government agencies. Mm -hmm. They should all be abolished. I mean, uh, they, they don't do you, the average American, any good. To the contrary, they're your enemy. Uh, the FDA is a good example. Yeah, people think, well, well who's going to protect me against bad drugs? Well, the fact is they don't. The FDA probably kills more people every year than the Defense Department does in a typical decade. Why? Because they tremendously raise the costs of yeah, new drugs. Of new drugs yeah. And the time that it takes to get them out there. Uh, actually, the um, desire of a pharmaceutical company to stay in business and to make money is a much better defense than a bunch of bureaucrats that, as a general rule, find that it's, it's better to slow things down yeah. than to approve them. So, and this is true of absolutely every area of the government. It's um, including the Defense Department, quite frankly. It doesn't defend the U.S. It's, it's hardly. No, it's actually running around the world <clears throat> creating provocations that might get us into another war uh, unnecessarily uh, on top of it. Mm -hmm. So... No, of course I'm an anarchist, an anarcho-capitalist. Hey, well, along those lines of the FDA, it's another agency that's near and dear to our hearts, the SEC. Because you ask the average person on the street, uh, what does the SEC do? And they say they protect us against securities fraud. But in reality, all the SEC does is, is it's a big filing system, and you file papers, and if they blow up five years later then they come after you. They're not preventative. And it specifically says on every prospectus, every document, they haven't, these securities haven't been approved or disproved by the SEC. And yet people believe that it's the imprimatur of honesty, good housekeeping, seal of approval from the government. And how many investors have been fleeced because of the SEC? Yes, it should be renamed the Swindler's Encouragement Commission because it gives the average guy the illusion that he's being somehow protected. Uh, so the SEC is, is uh, the enemy of the average investor from that point of view. But worse than that, uh, the tremendous costs that they impose upon business, they suck billions. Now, I'm not talking about their $2 billion budget. That's bad enough. Uh, it's 10 times that much, 20 times, 100 times that much that they cost business in pointless and needless regulations and taxes and delays and liabilities. No, it, it, it's, it should be abolished. Yeah, and the litigation expenses mm -hmm. and the Sarbanes-Oxley, where they now have to uh, certify every public filing. And you know what that means. So, hey, one other thing. So you got a new book coming out, The Assassin. How's that fit into what we were talking about? Well, I've done what I am doing with uh, my colleague, John Hunt, a series of novels. It started out with Speculator. We're, we're trying to reform the unjustly besmirched reputations of <laughs> six highly politically incorrect occupations. So in Speculator, which is available now, uh, our hero, 23-year-old Charles Knight, goes off to Africa to invest a, uh, a mining stock that he's made a little money on, gets involved in a 
African Bush War, makes a couple hundred million dollars, has it stolen from him. Uh, it, it's uh, quite an education in many ways uh, and a good read, I've got, if I do say so myself. Then seven years later, after running around the world with some of the money that he's saved, uh, he becomes a drug lord. And here we explain the drug business, both legal and illegal. And once again, he makes a huge amount of money and they steal it from him. So now he's getting kind of pissed off. Some guys have all the luck, huh? Well, he's having, he treats life as an adventure. So, so now, as pissed off as he is, having two fortunes stolen from him by the government, he decides that there are some people that just need killing. <laughs> and he becomes an assassin. And here we're exploring, that's not out yet, it'll be out in November. Here we're exploring the morality and the techniques and the history of political assassinations. I think this is going to be a very good book. But get the, get the first two. Uh, and, and they're available through one of our websites, which is um, internationalman.com, where I write several articles a week. And uh, everybody should take a look at internationalman.com, Kerry. All right. Hey, yeah, definitely your articles are must reading. We will uh, look forward to November and the release of The Assassin. Uh, you know, what's great is that you don't take yourself too seriously. You don't take the books too seriously. So they're really entertaining, nice, quick reads. Well, a case can be made that all of reality is just a figment of our imagination. So let's let's make the best of it by trying to enjoy ourselves. Yeah, well, there's a, something like a 56% chance that we're just all living in a simulation. So I want to do the parts of the simulation that feel good and try to get rid of the parts of the simulation that don't, but I haven't quite figured that out yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm running with you, absolutely. <laughs> all right, thanks, Doug. It's always great talking with you. Okay, thank you, Kerry. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.